this is part four of the chapter three lecture notes. Um, hopefully I will finish up this time. Um, I don't like to do more than four parts, so I think I've told you that before. But anyway, uh, we, we said the primary structure of a protein was simply the sequence of amino acids, and the secondary structure is just that chain of amino acids um, formed into a helix, which is like a spiral shape, um, or a pleated sheet. The alpha helix or the beta pleated sheet is the secondary structure. And you can see a picture of the alpha helix here. Kind of looks like DNA. Uh, the DNA is a double helix. And the beta pleated sheet here. The, um, I, I do want to say this while, while we're at this point because there is a question about prions. Prions are misfolded proteins that can cause disease like mad cow disease and there is a question in your study guide about misfolded proteins and for the one that causes mad cow disease at what level of protein structure is um you know uh does does the protein um you know uh form into the prion that causes mad cow disease in other words at what level is the mutation i guess you could say and it's actually in the book it says it's the tertiary structure but it's actually a mutation in the secondary structure which is going to lead to a mutation in the tertiary structure so i wanted to say that in the notes and make sure you knew that the tertiary structure is the final three-dimensional shape of the protein and so I was looking to see if they had a good example here, but um, so if this red protein here, this is the final three, this is really a two-dimensional shape though, but okay, let me think of a way. Okay, uh, this is an example of how you can, um, like an analogy that you can use. So um, there was a time that phones had cords, right? So the cord, the phone cord that's um, spiral shaped, that is the helix. That's the secondary structure. But if you took that phone cord and you tied it in a knot or several knots, that would be the tertiary structure. So um, that's what I mean by the final three-dimensional shape. And that shape is determined by hydrophobic interactions, ionic bonding, hydrogen bonding, uh, disulfide link linkages, um, just different. This should be an R. I don't know why that, that's happened twice in these slides. But anyway, um, the quaternary structure is when there are several proteins that have formed tertiary structures that are um, joined together. and a Good example of that is I'm looking to see if they have hemoglobin. Nope. Okay, so hemoglobin is a um, protein that has four subunits, and each of those four subunits has its own tertiary structure. So um, it, this one here has two subunits. So each one of these subunits has a tertiary structure, but when you put them together, that's the quaternary structure. So it just consists of more than one um, tertiary protein you know, joined together. So here's your primary structure. It's just the sequence or the chain of amino acids. Your secondary structure is whether or not it is a pleated sheet or a helix. And then the tertiary structure is when that um, alpha helix or pleated sheet is folded further into a three-dimensional structure, the final three-dimensional shape. And quaternary is when you have several tertiary proteins linked together. Um, Proteins can be denatured. Heating will denature a protein. Um, when we cook an egg, which is primary, primarily proteins and lipids, um, cooking it changes the protein structure, um, changes in pH and changes in temperature tend to be, um, so changes in whether or not the protein is 
um, dissolved in, you know, whatever the pH level is, whether it's an acid or a base, and whether it's a strong acid or a strong base, will determine whether the protein functions. Most proteins in the body function at pH levels of um, around 7.3 or 4, but um, in the stomach, the protein pepsin is only activated when the pH drops very low to 1 or 2. So um, the pH is very important. The temperature is very important to the protein maintaining its shape and its function. Now, our last group of macromolecules are called nucleic acids. And there are two types. There's the one that um, contains our genetic code. It's called DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid. And then there's RNA or ribonucleic acid. Um, DNA contains our genetic code and um, RNA plays a role in helping DNA code for our traits. So um, nucleic acids, the DNA is located in the nucleus if the cells are eukaryotic, but prokaryotic cells don't have a nucleus. Um, DNA can also be located in the mitochondria, which all cells have, and the chloroplasts, which only plant cells have. Prokaryotic cells don't have any of these. Prokaryotic cells don't have any membrane-enclosed organelles. So these three organelles are only found in eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells would just have their DNA located in a region. It's called the nucleoid region, but it would basically just be located in the cytoplasm of the cell. Now, DNA codes for our genes. So DNA has our, um, contains our genes, which code for our traits. Basically, each gene codes for a specific protein. Now, when DNA is in a resting cell that's not actively dividing, it's called chromatin. And so it's uh, chromatin is DNA combined with histone proteins. And it's a very um, spread out, um, I guess, uh, diffused um, form of, D of um, DNA. But then when the cell is ready to divide, that chromatin will condense and pack and form these rod-shaped structures. Um, sometimes they look like rods like this, and then sometimes you'll see them, they're hooked, there will be two that are linked together in the center, so they'll look like an X. This is probably the most common way that you have seen chromosomes, if you've seen pictures of them, is their X shapes. Um, because we say that a, a girl will have two X sex chromosomes and a boy has an X and a Y. Um, so um, chromosomes are condensed forms of chromatin, and they only form when the cell is about to divide. Uh, DNA codes for genes, and genes contain instructions for producing proteins. Now, RNA kind of helps the DNA uh, to do its job. So RNA is primarily involved in synthesizing the proteins that the DNA codes for. The messenger RNA carries out a process called transcription, where it copies a DNA code, and then it leaves the nucleus, and it takes that code to the cytoplasm so that it can be um, translated into a protein. So Inside the nucleus, the DNA will code for messenger RNA, and that's transcription. And then outside the nucleus, the messenger RNA um, will work together with transfer RNA to actually produce or synthesize the protein. So transfer RNA actually transfers amino acids to the correct place that they need to be in to produce that protein and that is called translation. And ribosomal RNA also assists in protein synthesis. Ribosomal RNA actually forms a structure called a ribosome, and ribosomes make proteins. That is their job. So um, nucleotides 
are the monomers of DNA. They're also the monomers of RNA. So nucleotides are the monomers of nucleic acids. They consist of three parts, a nitrogenous base, which can be, here's the nitrogenous bases down here. They can be cytosine or thymine or uracil, and they can also be adenine or guanine. So we just represent them with letters. We just say C, T, U, A, or G. These are the C, T, A, and G can be found in DNA, um, but the T is replaced with a U if it's RNA. So um, the base and then a pentose sugar called ribose or deoxyribose and a phosphate group. So sugar, a phosphate, and a base will form the nucleotide, and um, nucleotides linked together will form RNA and DNA. So DNA has um, a double helix structure. The bases form the, a double helix is a twisted ladder. So the nitrogenous bases form the steps of the ladder, the rungs of the ladder. And then the sugars and the phosphates form the sides. Um, so it's just if they together they form a twisted ladder shape. Um, and DNA always works like this. Adenine always bonds with thymine. So in, in the two groups of DNA, here's one nucleotide right here. You've got your phosphate group, your, your deoxyribose, and your thymine, your T. Okay, so that's one side of the DNA or one strand of the DNA. So the other strand will always have an A that pairs with a T. Um, adenine always pairs with thymine, A pairs with T, and guanine always pairs with cytosine, or G pairs with C. So here's a guanine, and here's a cytosine. And what you can tell is that the pairs are always a single ring. Thymine is a, has a single ring structure. Uh, paired with one that has a double ring structure. So if we go back, pyrimidines have a single ring, ring structure and purines have a double ring structure. So what you always have is you have a single ring paired with a double ring. Here's your single ring cytosine paired with your double ring guanine. Um, don't get mixed up because this is a sugar. Even though it's the same color, that's not a part of the ring structure of thymine. That's the deoxyribose. And same here. This is deoxyribose. Okay. So the, um, the steps of the DNA ladder are always going to be three, base, or three rings wide. So they're all the same width. So you don't have any um, that, are, that are double ring bonded to double ring or single ring bonded to single ring. You have always a single ring thymine bonded with a double ring adenine, and that gives you three rings in a row, and it keeps the steps of the ladder the same width, three rings wide. Um, now, this is going into a lot of information that we're gonna cover in a later chapter, um, but I'm gonna go through it very fast. DNA can express a gene by synthesizing RNA, and that's called transcription. And then the RNA um, sequence is complementary to the DNA sequence. So the only thing is, you, instead of putting a T, you have to use a U. So everywhere you would put a T, you would put it. You, it would be a U. So A would be complementary to U. A would be complementary to U. T would be complementary to A. T complements A. G complements C. C complements G. And this would be a C. And this would be a G. And so um, that is how the RNA is transcribed, is that it's complementary to the DNA. And then ribosomes are made up of ribosomal RNA, and the messenger RNA is what is transcribed from the DNA in the nucleus, and the transfer RNA is what the, the RNA that actually transfers the correct amino acid into the correct spot on the um, um, protein, um, so there is no mutations. Um, and I'm actually just going to stop here. Um, we're running out of time, and this is really going into more detail.